This is going to be a video I've been trying to get out for a while about uh, some tips on uh, reloading with your Dillon presses and uh, I'll try to go through it step by step and if i got time I'll uh, sort of go into uh, whether reloading is worth it and uh, some of the tips on how I uh, make it affordable. So uh, we'll get started. Right now I got a Dillon uh, 650 uh, set up reloading 9mm and uh, I got a 1050 set up uh, doing 45 ACP and um, with pistol ammo you can uh, when you quit reloading for the night you can pretty much just put your handles down and uh, and they can you can come back a week later you know if you set it up right so uh, let me get started on the case feeders uh, these things look huge and you want to pile a bunch of uh, brasses in them but I recommend not to put any more on pistol ammo not more than like 200 and uh, with rifle ammo not more than about a hundred and uh, on the case feeder tubes I put these marks on there to uh, on the nine millimeter here you can see they're all lined up and uh, that's because uh, there's some uh, brasses that will get through there you know if when you're shooting uh, used brasses uh, as much as you sort them they'll get through there and uh, the biggest enemy on uh, this run is going to be 380 and I do the same thing on the uh, on the 45 um, got these marks going all the way down and uh, you get a 45 GAP gets in there every now and then you'll be able to see it happening and uh, so that's uh, those are my tips for the uh, case feeders anyway now for primers on the uh, 650 uh, you don't really have to watch that rod too much this is one of my biggest tips is put a 45 shell it fits on there perfect do that on both machines uh, on the 650 uh, you install the primer on the end of the forward stroke so you can actually tell whether you put a primer in or not on the 1050 it actually does it on the downstroke you have no idea whether it does it or not my biggest piece of advice is to look at that rod every now and then and make sure that it's dropping every time otherwise uh, you can end up with a whole run of ammo that uh, did not get primed now on to some of the problems you're going to have with these machines um, powder getting on the machines is going to cause all kinds of problems it's going to not allow the shell plate to uh, index properly and uh, things like that. I buy these cans of uh, computer duster destroyer or something and um, actually you know if I start to see powder on there I'll uh, with the plate up of course while I'm reloading I'll just throw these things out and get rid of everything and uh, continue to reload. Uh, cleanliness is going to be one of your biggest advantages on reload. If you bought a strong mount for your uh, 650 press, it will come with a bracket that goes on the RL 550 press. And what I did here is I took three pieces of copper tubing or half inch copper pipe, cut them to an inch and a half long, and bolted it right on the side. The holes are drilled and everything, and it allows you to put one of these large bins on the side. Because the, uh, the little bin that hangs off the 650 just isn't enough for a good roll. And for different bins to be able to use, these are Stanley bins. You can get them at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. I think they come in like three packs. They fit on the uh, 1050 perfectly. And uh, they fit on the 650 when you use the little adapters here. And uh, you can uh, pretty much just have a whole pile of them to, uh, you know, keep your, uh, keep your ammo all sorted out. And they're a lot cheaper. Now for tools of the trade, what tools should you have out? I recommend a really long pair of tweezers. The reason I recommend that is when these case tubes are filled up and you have a problem, you can reach down in here with a pair of tweezers and pull the cases out enough to where you can get the tube out and correct whether you have a jam, an upside down shell, or the wrong shell. And also, uh, they tell you not to vacuum up gunpowder at all but uh, there's a reason for that. Any vacuum cleaner that has a pre-filter, in other words, uh, mainly shop vacs, wet vacs, uh, you can vacuum up gunpowder because it will uh, you know, be caught in the filter and not have to go through the motor or anything like that. The only primer I've ever set off was uh, vacuuming the floor with a regular vacuum cleaner and 
I heard that thing tinkling around in there and boom. It's one thing the uh, longer you do it, the better out you get. Uh, one of the ways I keep powder from shaking out is I'll follow the shell around and make it smoother as I put the bowl in there. And uh, it's just way to learn. You just, uh, you'll get it. It's second nature. I love to do it. I make lots of ammo and uh, it's pretty gratifying. So one of the things to watch for in your bins is uh, gunpowder. If it's all over the place, especially on the uh, on the 1050, you'll know that you have a primer issue or some cases that don't have any primers. And you never want to take these things and just put them up there on the shelf and call them good to go. You always want to uh, them gently, and you want to give them a quick go over. You know, check your primers, make sure they're seated right. You know, just make sure the whole uh, run looks good. So, like I said earlier, the uh, the dust on the on the uh, pistol rounds is plenty for lubricant. I never lubricate my pistol rounds, and um, a lot of the ammo I keep in ammo cans. It's all loose packed, uh, except for some of the M1A stripper clips, and. Um, We'll just uh, maybe go through uh, some of the other stuff. A sink in a reloading room is a fantastic thing. Um, you know, I'm all about cleanliness. And uh, let's talk about how you get brasses. Uh, you let your friends know that you are looking for brass. Uh, brass is like the number one money saver. If you can get your brasses for free, then you can make lots of this. And uh, it's cheap. A lot cheaper than buying it. I can't even imagine buying ammunition anymore. So if you stay at it long enough you'll end up with buckets and buckets of brass and I uh, also launder all my own rags, clean the guns and towels for laying out here and um, this is sort of the way I do it. And uh, another thing I have to do there's all your discarded brasses that have problems, cracks, wrong thing um, and you'll end up with a pile of that too and buy your bullets as, in, as bulk as you can and primers I can't say enough about primers I remember years ago uh, you couldn't buy primers and uh, so I have tons of those um, it's just all part of it it's just uh, whether it's worth it or not I don't know it uh, depends on how much you shoot and uh, how much ammo you want to have on board. Uh, if you shoot a lot, it's worth it. If you want to have thousands and thousands of rounds, it's worth it. So anyway, I hope that was helpful on some of the reloading tips. And um, like I said before, it's uh, for me it's all about cleanliness and organization. And uh, I built this room because I, I needed a room where I could uh, have some climate control and uh, be able to make a little bit of a mess and clean it up. And uh, that's all it came about. I do uh, have a series of videos on building this room, and maybe I'll tag on before I even started the room on the end of this video. So you guys have a great night, and uh, we'll see you next time. Happy reloading to you. This is the start of my reloading room. plan is I'm, I'll try to get a little bit of the work in here. The plan is to put a wall here. There's going to be a door right here that swings out with a lock and a deadbolt. Then the wall is going to carry on over there. And I'll probably move that generator over to the left a little bit. Then the uh, freezers will get moved back in here and the refrigerator. Uh, replacing that door with a solid door. Uh, deadbolt. Put some bars over that window. Reloading bench will be right back there. And right over here will be a uh, utility room sink you gotta have a sink in a room where you're reloading uh, it just uh, makes sense